Hello everyone. Welcome to another day here at Dear Hallmark. Cheers to you. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whenever you're listening to this. My name is Dara and this is my space to nerd and geek out about the Hallmark Channel. So Wednesdays are our Chesapeake Shores days. And you guys, so the one episode a week was really bumming me out. I'm like, I need to speed this up. There's, we're on season five and I want to be able to finish this, hopefully, by the time season five is up. So I'm going to double it up and we are going to cover episode three and four for this week. How does that sound? Does that sound okay? So episode three really did feel more like a filler episode. So in this episode, Abby has decided to move back to Chesapeake Shores for good. So it's no longer for the summer. It's for good. And we were left with her holding some type of important document and groveling to her knees as Wes left. And come to find out, she was getting hit with a custody modification from her ex-husband, who is Wes. And um, her and Trace, first of all, this irked the mess out of me. Her and Trace, more so her, decided she just wants to be friends with Trace because she's like, listen, I can't do all of this. I just need, like, I just, I just need to focus on the girls, which I can understand. Um, but at the same time, it's like you can't have your cake and eat it too. And I'm going to talk to you about that in, in episode four. But um, so she tells Trace, you know, we just, we just have to be friends. And she works with Connor to try to help her go through the legalities of this custody modification that her ex-husband has filed. Also, in this episode, I finally found the birth order. So I know the birth order of the O'Brien siblings. So let's go from oldest to youngest. We have Abby, who is our main character. Then we have Kevin, played by Brendan Penny, who is uh, in the army. And then we have Bree, who is the playwright. Now turned novelist, Bree decides that she wants to write a novel. She no longer wants to do playwriting, which was her source of income in Chicago and she's decided to under the influence not under the influence but influenced by her older sister Abby she has decided to also stay in the shores for the summer and her dad has offered her a cottage first of all the O'Brien family I feel like own half of Chesapeake Shores or maybe their ancestors like built the town literally um but they there's a cottage that is right across, literally right across the lawn from Jess's B&B that her dad has decided to let her use if she wants to stay for the summer, if that's what she decides to do, so she can write. And she also has a heart-to-heart with her mom, which was very cool to see. Because again, because Brie is two out of five, it's hard to kind of um, grasp her personality type. She can kind of f- fall under the radar. But it was really sweet. To, it seems to me that she's the closest to the mom as opposed to the other siblings, just with the way she's able to connect and talk with the mom. And even how she tells the mom about the other siblings, like, you know, you need to give Jess some space and stuff like that. So after Brie, we have Jess, who is just still working on this B&B. She's excited to have Brie with her. Um, And we don't hear much about Jess with this episode. This episode focuses on my best friend, uh, Connor, who is the youngest of the O'Brien clan. And he there's this one scene where, well, first of all, (laughs) first of all, um, the dad, Mick, decides that he wanted to play basketball with Connor. And he's like, wait, you want me to play with you? Like, that's what you want to do? And so fast forward um, about 20 minutes in, and they actually, like, we go, we watch them have that basketball game. And um, Connor, of, of course, beats his dad, and he's excited. And then Trace pulls up. And Trace, um, the dad is like, oh, my gosh, please, please play him. Play him in 21. I can't play him. (laughs) And I took it to be like, yo, he was mad tired and Connor wanted to go another round. So it's like, yo, Trace, I tag you in. I ain't got no more juice left in the tank. (laughs) Please uh, play with my son. And so 
Trace walked himself up there, dribbled the ball like he was on the 76ers. Like he knew what he was doing. Come to find out he did because he dribbled the ball, not dribbled, but he like put the ball in between his legs a couple times and then went for a three and made it. And um, then there was an awkward exchange between Trace and Connor because as uh, Trace was about to go up for a layup, um, I was going to call him Andrew Connor, like hit him and it made, it made Trace fall. And Mick was just like, what in the world? Like, what are you doing? And Connor, there's some, there's, there's some undercurrent of anger there that we as watchers still can't put our finger on. And it really comes to a head in episode four, but there is a exchange that Connor and his dad Mick have in the car on their way back from the basketball game and the dad asks dude what what's going on what what was up back there with you and Trace and then Connor's just like whatever man like forget it and he was like no if you got something to say say it stop oh you know like say something and then Connor says he's so tired of of something but it 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 was just like he just kind of blew up and then the dad was like, well, fine, if you don't want to be a part of this family. like, Oh, that's what that's what Connor said. Connor said, like, you think just because we're all here for the fourth, like for the fourth of July holiday, that everything's just going to be fixed. You, like me and he started naming off all the siblings, Abby, Kevin, Bree and Jess and I, we all have our different versions. Mind you, I don't know what he's talking about. If he's referencing their relationship with their dad or their relationship with their mom or their upbringing in general. I don't understand, but he's just like, we all have our different versions and blah, 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 blah. And, and the dad was just like, listen, if you don't want to be a part of this family, then fine. And he gets out of the car. He was like, I'll get a ride with your mother. And then he's, and then kind of like, no, 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 I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But, um, the dad is just, he comes back and he gives Connor his credit card. It was just like f- top the tank off and uh, make sure you park it and stuff like that. So. And but they had a really nice hug when they when all the the family met at Jess's B and B. Um, Connor and the dad had a, a it was I felt it because they hugged and then the dad let go but Connor kept on like he kept his hands around him, and Mick felt that and so he he re embraced Connor as well. And it was, yeah, man oh man, it was, it that was a that was a really good scene. That was a really good scene. But let's go into episode four, shall we? Because this is where stuff starts to pop off. So episode four starts with Bree doing yoga in the backyard of the O'Brien house. And everyone's like, so are we moving to the cottage or are we staying here? What's going on? Can you sign? Can you give us a memo, please? And you can tell Bree is putting it off. Like for some reason, she's not ready to move into the cottage, but we don't actually know why. And Abby has her first day at work. She has dis- she still hasn't told her girls yet that she's um, going to be moving them to Chesapeake Shores for good. They still think it's just for the summer. So she has all of her files from New York transferred to her office. And she has her first day at the Baltimore office. And she kind of comes off like, you know, that New York. Um, look at me sounding like that. Like a New York grit, if you will. Like a little. She's like, oh, I came on too strong. But um, one one phrase that she said that really resonated with me um, that she said the company says capital management um, first be best and then be first. I was like, that actually makes a lot of sense. Work at being excellent. And then once you're excellent, then worry about being first. And I was like, I can totally get down with that. And I, I really like that. So. Um, also Mick, he is working at building a playhouse for the girls, for, uh, Abby's daughters, because he, he's like, man, none of my kids are here. Connor's back in New York. Cause the 4th of July holiday is over and Kevin's out, you know, he got shipped back out. He's deployed and Jess is at her B and B. Um, Bree went to the cottage during the day, even though she's staying at the O'Brien house at night. Abby's at work so all he has are his granddaughters and his mom 
And so he's like, well, you know what? I'm going to build them a playhouse. And I feel like it also gave him something to do. And he was very committed and determined to do it. And it is so beautiful. By the end of the episode, you're able to see all of the work that he put into it. And the girls loved it. It was just gorgeous. Now, let me tell you about this little chickadee that came up into Trace's house. Her name, we find out, is Lee. And she is from Nashville. And how we find out about her. So our first meeting of Trace in episode four, he is going, he's walking out of his house about to go to work and his dog, he brings his dog outside and he drives off not knowing that Lee is there the whole time. She's in this candy apple red BMW with a Nashville uh, license plate. And then we see with like, we see her with a hair full. It, it it looks like twist, but it's it almost looks like it was supposed to be dreads, but I'm not sure. Um, but she gives me gypsy bohemian vibes just with her whole her whole demeanor and her the way that she dresses. And she walks her happy self into his house. That's where I got. <laughs> I had to pause and make a voice note, you guys. I said, I know this woman did not just walk herself up into somebody's house with no rhyme or reason and then had the nerve because Trace had to come back. He forgot something. He left his car door open and wanted to run into the house, but he noticed something wasn't right. He was like Axel. And then he he heard the dogs bark from inside the house and was wondering how he got in there because he let Axel out come to find out sis is sitting on his bed in her clothes her dirty clothes that she probably was you know and gas stations with I'm just like what in the world and th- I love this part Trace has some of the best reactions for me first it was the well let me introduce myself from episode two and now he walked up in the house sees her and doesn't even say how he says seriously I said my sentiments exactly bro my sentiments exactly you just gonna walk somebody up in your house up in their house sit on their bed look at their stuff I don't care if I've known you for 25 years if I left abruptly I don't want nothing to do with y'all the audacity of you to just walk into my house unannounced and sit on my bed like you know me like I was I was beside myself on that one. Um, But apparently we find uh, throughout their conversations together, Trace and her were in a band. They did three songs together. I also think that Lee has some feelings for Trace that she's not acting upon, that she really wants to establish herself as a friend before. Not that that's a good thing, but I can tell that she she's feeling the kid, you know. Um, And she's like, how can you just leave all that we had and blah, 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 blah. And further down the line of their conversation, Trace says something. He said, he said something to the effect of it was my fault because of me. Someone almost lost their life. So apparently there was an accident that happened in Nashville that prompted him to just drop everything and move back to the shores that he just wanted to get away from it. And he hasn't picked up his guitar since. And Lee is really trying to coach him to get back into guitar playing, to write songs, to get back into music. And Trace isn't having it. He's like, I just need you to get out of my face, por favor. Like, can you do that for me? And she's like, listen, I'm here for you. And I just want you to write your music and I just want to be able to have what we had back in Nashville. Like, how can you just throw that away? And he's like, simple like this, balls up a piece of paper, throws it in the trash. No, he didn't really say that, but my goodness. And then Jess, um, so Trace tells Lee that she can't stay there. And then she ends up going to a and b the B&B, Jess's B&B, and Jess finds out who she is. She's like, oh my gosh, you're like this famous country singer. Of course you can stay here, even though she's not really open. And Lee's just like, listen, I just need some place to crash really quick. And so Brie, uh, Jess ends up telling Brie because she's like, we got to tell Abby. And um, even though Ab- they end up telling Abby and Abby's like, I don't care. Her, Trace and I are just friends. You're like, sis, you, first of all, it was your, it's your doing that you're quote unquote, just friends. And then we, there's a scene where she's replaying this, um, the conversation she had with her sisters of them telling her about Lee. 
And there was this really not awkward, but like interesting scene between her and Trace where she drives up to the church that he's remodeling, that he's doing for work. And she said, yeah, I got your text. You wanted to show me something. And he brings out this wedding ring that he found under the, under the floorboard. And so she's examining it. She was like, well, I don't know. Like, I haven't seen this before. And she gives it back to him. And he's like, no, give it to your dad. Um, maybe he knows something about it. And it was like, oh, my gosh. I could see, like, there was some subtext there. Because it's like Trace giving her a wedding ring. And she's just like, what? But, um... Then this woman's going to say, Trace, I know we have a lot of catching up to do and a lot of time to reclaim. Maybe we can have brunch. You cannot have your cake and eat it too, ma'am. Because he said, no, that wouldn't be a good idea. And I second that because, you know, if y'all have some good pancakes with blueberries on it, with some syrups running down the sides, with some nice scrambled eggs and some bacon and some orange juice, you know feelings are going to be had and feelings are going to be rehashed like them hash browns on the side of your plate. And then you're going to be falling again, just like you don't want to. And then it's going to be confused and you're going to be confusing him because then you're going to push him away, but bring him close and push him away and bring him close. And nobody has time for that. Y'all are too grown for that type of mess. Okay. So I applauded Trace for that. But can we go back to my best friend, Connor? In this episode, he is incredibly angry and we see him get pop off at his mom and his mom is really trying to make efforts to spend time with him and he's just like get out of my life like get like he'll let her in and then just blow up out of nowhere and she's like why are you angry like and he's just like whatever like just pops off at him at her and then um he calls abby to try to check on mom and then abby's like connor what did you say and he's like i don't need you and he just pops off at abby and it's just like I am now I am very curious as to what is going on with my homie. Like, did something was it dad? Was it mom? Was it some sibling hierarchy that you felt like you were at a disadvantage or you weren't loved enough or you weren't valued enough? Uh, Inquiring minds want to know. And so we are, oh, Abby gives Gran the wedding ring and it's just like something washes over Gran. I think that was Gran's wedding ring, but we just got to figure out from whence, like from what time period did she have another dude outside of their grandfather? Uh Uh-oh, much like Irresistible Blueberry Farm. Did we have another lover? Is that what's happening in the camp? I hope not. Um, but the episode four ends with the family at the table and Mick is trying to silence his phone, but he, his phone, like the phones keep ringing. So he answers the house phone. You guys, it is a call from the United States government concerning Kevin. He's missing. Something happened to him. Oh my God goodness now we know he's okay because we've seen him and i've seen previews of other seasons <laughs> so i know he's okay but still i'm just like oh my gosh so you guys that is episode three and four let me know i know pro- y'all are probably light years ahead of me in the chesapeake shores watching of it all but let me know what you feel about chesapeake shores how you feel about this episode and if you still don't watch it why <laughs> I'm curious. Um, As always, you guys can leave a voice message. There is a link in the show notes that will take you to a page where you can leave a minute's worth of your thoughts. So let me know. And on that note, I will talk to you guys next week.